Well, this uh, video video segment is for uh, the problem chapter five, sliding ladder. Uh, we are dealing with uh, a ladder that is leaning against the wall, and the top uh, contact point is sliding down at a given specified velocity. What you would like to do, for example, is to find what is the velocity of the center center point of the bottom contacting uh, circle. All right, now. This problem can be done with uh, use of two point curve joints. For example, the center of the top circle is going to al move along a vertical line, and the center of the bottom circle is also move along the bottom line. However, I decide to do that differently. In other words, one uh, point, uh, point uh, curve joint, which is the top circle center, and one sliding curve joint, which is the bottom uh, bottom circle sliding on the edge of the wall, okay? And there's some theory that's developed in the book. These are from uh, basic calculus uh, related race problem that uh, I'm going to ignore. I'm also going to ignore all dimensions, okay? So if you want to actually do physic physics problem with, uh, you know, with actual dimension, actual velocities, then you go ahead and uh, make your own dimension or follow the ones in the book. All right, okay, let's start. Uh, where are we? Right here. Uh, we start with the product file. So, uh, Control N, P, product. All right, so insert a new part in there, and I'm going to call this thing the wall. Right click properties, make it wall and wall. Wall and wall. And let's make it. Uh, it's just an L. So uh, on a convenient plane, on this, uh, say, this vertical plane, I will draw a an L. Well, I can always do it with... Uh, uh, profile which I can then thicken it out so for example something like this you decide on how you're going to do this it's entirely up to you exit now I can't pad this thing but I can pad it if I thicken use the thicken option so uh, let me give some, uh, some thickness here 0.5 oh, yeah yeah that's good okay whatever is easy for you Okay, so then I'm going to insert the, uh, well actually let me go to the sketch, make this thing a little bit taller. Okay, so I'll make this thing a little bit taller. Right. I think my computer is thinking. Uh, just one second. All I want to do is to make this uh, this height taller, but the computer went in a state of coma, I think. So let me see. Yeah, that's it. Exit. All right. So now we're going to insert the next part, which is the ladder. Now, I will have to come back to this part wall later on. you see why. So insert. Insert a new part in there. And... Uh, I always say no, so right click properties ladder. Ladder and ladder. Okay, so let's do it. So go to ladder on a convenient plane, on that vertical plane, I will sketch something that resembles the ladder. Uh, so uh, something like this perhaps, and a circle, and go up there. Wrap it up, close the circle. Now let me give some dimension to this uh, this circle radius. So uh, let me see for a second. Uh, this one, I'm going to make it uh, a 0.25. You, you'll see why I want a specific number here. Okay. And then same thing with this guy. I think that will be yeah, 0.25 anyways, because these are parallel. All right, so... Uh, uh, exit and pad it. 
uh, by a length that I want, so I'll make it 0 0.25, 0 0.3, or something like that, 0 0.4. Okay. There we are, you can see that uh, there's the ladder and there's the wall. Now, I do want to create two points while I'm in the, in the ladder. While I'm in the ladder, I want to create two points. One up here because I want to put the center, uh, the, that point, which is the center of the circle, on a line which uh, is vertical. And then I want to plot the velocity and things like that at the bottom point. So these two points that I'm creating must be in the ladder. So I use the center of a circle. So there's a point that's going to be created right there. And then I'm going to do another point in the ladder which is the center of this circle, because you want to plot the velocity of this this, this point down here. Create a sensor there and, and plot the velocity. Now, remember this radius was 0.25, so I'm going to go back to the ladder, back to the ladder, back to the wall, back to the wall, and on a convenient plane, so for example, on this vertical plane, I will sketch. I'll sketch a, a line which is uh, 0.25 away from this vertical edge. Uh, here's a line right there. Let's give it some dimension. The dimension from here to here is 0.25. This is to ensure that the center of this top circle remains on that line. Okay. And uh, I can also bring this thing and put it on that uh, edge, although that is not a requirement, but I'll rather do it. Okay, there we are. Okay, good. Uh, exit. Now keep in mind that this line must be in the wall. Okay. So uh, we're pretty much done as far as the, the parser is concerned. Let's, uh, uh, let's go ahead to assembly design and create the appropriate... Uh, appropriate uh, uh, constraints. So first of all, eventually I want to do a point curve joint between this point and that line that I drew. In order for creating a point curve joint, slide curve joint, roll curve joint, these things must be touching each other. So the first thing I'm going to do is to anchor the, the wall, that makes sense, and then create a coincidence, this point and that top point. If I wanted, if I wanted to start way on that on that top location, and uh, if you if I update, that's good. That's how it's going to go. Now I want to bring this thing down and put it on that face. In order to create a slight curve joint, this curve must be touching that. And con uh, the coincidence is not going to work. I'll let you play play with it. Tack. So between that face and this face, and if things don't look good, look right, we change this internal to external. So let's update. That's what I meant by not looking good. So let me go to that constraint, the last constraint that I did. It was right here. That was a contact constraint. Double click on it and change it from internal to external. There we are. That looks better. Okay, very good. Now, uh, let's see now. Uh, we are pretty much done because we cannot create point curve joint and slide curve joint with a magic wand. I mean, even if you try it, it's not going to work. So we're going to go to the digital markup, DMU kinematics. Uh, try to get, try to create a mechanism with a magic wand, and you see that uh, we get something that's meaningless. Okay, uh, we anchor, uh, we anchor this. Okay, now notice that what happens is that basically you don't get any joints. You can see that. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and create a point curve joint. So uh, a point curve joint. We need a curve. There is a curve, and we need a point. That point must be this point, not the vertex but the point from uh, from the ladder that we created, so this top point right there. If the point was not on that curve, you would get a message saying that we cannot do it. And then you look for a slight curve joint. Here's a slight curve joint. You select the curve one, for example, that circle, and curve two, which is that edge, and we say, okay, degree of freedom is one, okay? 
Uh, slide curve join does not have any command. This is why I could not do this problem with two slide curve join, but point curve join does. And we can length driven. The total length is uh, uh, the total length is uh, uh, 3.27 inches, and the direction is upward. Although uh, be careful because this direction cannot be flipped as we did it in the in uh, uh, the prismatic joint. So let's keep it the way it is right now. Mechanism can be simulated. And uh, if you do it with uh, with a simulation with command, okay, this is what we get. This is what we want. Uh, and uh, right, close this. Okay, now I want to put some physics into this problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to plot, create a sensor here. So create a sensor, and the reference reference product is there. Reference point is here. Okay. Then the physics in the problem is that uh, we want to say the velocity of this point downward is uh, uh, a, a given number. Okay. So let's go ahead and create f of x on the mechanism. This is your command. Now, I want to say this is add a formula equal to, say, uh, one inch divided by one second, speed downward of one inch per second. All right. And the time times time. I may have to do some adjustments here, as you see, uh, as you see. Okay. So we say, all right, close that. Simulation with uh, laws. Let's do it over a, maybe a th three second interval because uh, the velocity was uh, one inch per second. The whole length of this thing was around 3.2 inches, 3.8 inches. So we make it three, three seconds. Activate sensor. We want the downward or uh, horizontal velocity of uh, this point. Uh, that'll be velocity in direction y, linear speed. Okay. So let's move this thing on the side. Don't close it. Move it on the side. Play it. Doesn't go all the way to the end because the length of that thing was actually a little bit more than three inches. Uh, three inches here. Uh, yeah, and we said three, uh, one inch per second, so it doesn't take you all the way there. And uh, graphics, and there we are. So the velocity starts, uh, it starts, that point starts, and the velocity drops, and eventually, of course, it's going to go to zero. Now, let me actually do the following. Let me measure exactly what the length of that line is. Uh, 3.778. Okay, so here's what, what we're going to do. We're going to uh, we're going to we're going to rewind this. Uh, clear the history. Make sure you clear the history. Okay, and then change the time simulation to 3.778 inches. Uh, second, 0.778. That means it will go all the way to the to the bottom. So. Uh, of course, these are all selected already. You play it. Let's move this thing out of the way. Mm -hmm. And now we play the graph. We uh, plot the graph. You see that it goes all the way to zero because that's when it becomes fully horizontal. All right, that takes care of the problem. Uh, yep. Yeah. Have fun with it.